Hey, Contractor John here. Welcome to my shop. Uh, we got this bad boy here, this DeWalt DW735X, a few weeks ago, and we've been using the heck out of it. And uh, it's not working on the bench here. We got to build a cart for it. Shop's kind of small, like everybody's shop. It's never big enough, is it? And uh, we're going to make a cart to roll this thing around in the shop. So uh, the cart's going to look like this. Here's what the finished planer cart is going to look like. Actually, utility cart. You can use it in a shop for anything. Hey, we're going to start by cutting uh, some of the rails here. And uh, always take your measurements and lay them out on your board so you know where your best yield is. In this case, we're going to cut two of the rails at 33. And then we're going to throw a, a leg at 29 and a half out of this 2x4. That'll give us the best yield. And then we'll do the rest out of the next two. So, so here we go. We got one cut at, we got one measured at 33. And we're going to do another one at 33 here. And you know we always want to mark each one individual or mark it from each end because the saw curve unless you're really really good with the measurement and really really good with the eyeball your uh, saw curve is going to take an eighth of it out and you're going to be short at the end so you're better off measuring each one individually And we're going to cut off the, the bad end here. We've only got about a quarter inch left. So pretty darn good yield on that first one there. Now your measurement of the height and stuff may change just a little bit. I just made mine that height because it... I'm talking to you and I've got it on my line. I just made it that height because it lines up with other things in my workshop. And that planer is super heavy and it'll allow me to just slide it off from one to another so all right now we have to rip a couple of two by fours uh we're going to use two by fours for the top rail around the table but on the bottom uh we're going to use two by twos so the aprons rails aprons so we're going to rip these uh we're going to rip a couple of them in half so we have our right dimension lumber I gotta tell you, I just got this uh, gripper push block, and uh, it, it's the cat's meow, man. I'll tell you, it is uh, adjustable for any depth of wood. If you get something really thick, you can screw a, uh, a block of wood on here and uh, adjust the center. Uh, it, it's just, and it's got nice grips on the bottom. You can adjust this center piece. So if you're ripping a wider piece like I just did. Uh, you can move that so the saw blades fits in in their space and uh, I, I'm telling you I've had it for like I think three days now and I just absolutely love it uh, there'll be a link to this down in the description in the common area but uh, big shout out to gripper here uh, yeah just a it's a great deal great deal save your fingers so all right back to the table now all right, we got all our parts cut and I laid them out on the table uh, 
the top here and a leg and a leg and then the bottom piece there. I laid them out and then I marked each leg and, and uh, rail so that they would go back together the way that I set them because I kind of made them up here. So, you know, AA, BB, CC, DD, and then did Y's and X's on the bottom, whatever, just a way to keep track of them. That's also. And then we're going to take and uh, we're going to glue this, glue this up and we're going to use the Craig uh, screws, the Craig jig, and we're going to put pocket hole, uh, pocket hole screws in here to hold this thing together. I think that ought to do just fine. So, so we know that we got to do our rails. Okay, two holes here, two holes at each end on both rails, and that on the bottom two by two, we're going to do that too. And then we'll have to do the cross pieces that go across the the rails, the cross rails too. So, so, all right. So we're going to get over to the Craig jig and just do some pocket holes. We got the Craig jig all set up, and uh, just a point here, something to remember: don't forget to adjust this block to the depth for an inch and a half, and then also your collar on your drill bit. Uh, don't forget to adjust that also. And there's an adjustment guide on the base of the Craig jig, so don't forget to do that. I've done it; it doesn't work out real well if you don't do that. So, uh, and then measure the distance up from the base here to the top of the block that's where you got to put your lines uh you got to put your lines up not down here because they'll be hidden by the block so uh so do that so all right here we go a little vacuum action here helps a lot on this thing so. I centered the hole on this two by two on the ripped two by four. I centered the hole on that. On these here, I just measured an, an inch in for the edge and an inch in for the edge. And I lined them up, they just lined up within a sixteenth of these two end holes. So I just went ahead and did it without moving it around or whatever. So measurements are there. So, all right, let's uh, put it together, clamp it up and put it together. All right, here we go. We're all set to put this thing together. Uh, using this regular type ball original I got it in a pack with a bottle of type on three as a promotional thing so indoor use it's going to be good so I use little pieces of uh, Formica cut off Formica for my glue thing and flux brushes and I it, it works really really well flux brushes are cheap enough you can throw them away if you want or you can wash them so uh, I got to tell you man it's uh the flies today read on Facebook that they're just people are having problems with flies in their houses and everything and that and I'm telling you man they are attack flies outside last night and today in the shop here man they are just like attack flies I don't know what's going on maybe it's the revenge of them or something I don't know maybe they're reacting to COVID too I'm not sure but kind of crazy here so if you see me swat that's what I'm doing so so, so this glue really, really adds strength to your joints. And I glue, some guys don't glue both ends. Whenever possible, I glue both ends. Uh, make sure you match up your, your uh, faces those letters you put AA and I've got CC here all right the Craig clamps face clamps and put that puppy on there and this one over here now we're using two and a half inch screws for inch and a half wood that's what they recommend 
so you get enough bite. See, my local Menards always has a good supply of these if I forget to order them or whatever, so. Alrighty. Alright, don't over tighten these things, that's the thing here. See how good I am left handed so you can see what I'm doing. Now we're going to flip this around and while we're here we're going to do our bottom one. Now we want to mark this up an inch and a half because when we put our casters on we're going to have to put a runner between there to catch the caster because the plate on the caster is not the plate on the caster is bigger than an inch and a half so you're going to have to have a two by four show you that when it gets to there. I'm going to have to have a 2 by 4 going across to catch everything. To catch the bolts on the caster. So Alright, just make sure that you leave an inch and a half on the bottom here. Push. Alrighty. And then this is one side. Of it, and then we're gonna do the other side, and then I'll bring you back when we uh, when we do the cross pieces and we actually put it together. All right, we're ready to glue this thing up and put this thing together. We've got the sides, the two sides made up. So uh, I made this. I call it my extra hand. Uh, it's just two two by fours together with a forty five degree brace angle, and it gives you something tall enough to rest something against is an extra pair of hands to hold it when you're clamping or whatever something together here comes the flies again I mean you may catch me getting one on camera here so all right glue up we're gonna do one side at a time here Them flies never land in the glue or anything, right? They always land on your head or... All right. Now we're gonna take a clamp and give it a little extra here. Just to hold it in place. So 
So we got that one now. Now this one's gonna go here and we'll clamp that up. So let's glue that up real quick. This is gonna save a lot of a lot of moving stuff around in the shop all the time. Line that puppy up. Grab your clamp again. No easy way to do this. That's what you call using your head, right? We're good now. Now we'll switch it around, we'll do the other side. Oh, see, you make mistakes. I drill pocket holes on this side. I forgot to drill pocket holes on that side. So we're gonna drill them. I put everything away. We're gonna get back out, drill pocket holes in here and uh, we'll be back to you in a couple minutes, okay? Yeah. All right, so we're doing, we're gonna glue this one up now. And it's really the same as the other side. Hey, we're gluing this last side up to bottom here. So just one little thing when you're when you're ripping these two by fours into the two by twos, if you're not exactly right, then it could cause a problem here. So what I want you to do is the cut side, the rip side, face them all one direction, down or up, it doesn't matter. As long as they're all facing the same direction. Then if you're a little bit out of square if the, if, the, if it's not exact two by two then it's not going to matter because when you line it up on that inch and a half line if you're off a little bit because you're doing that on the bottom it's going to uh, make this bottom shelf uneven so make sure that you put all the cuts one way or the other mine I put them all up no particular reason just decided to do it like that so uh, all right here we are with the bottom uh, we put both the two by fours on and casters I'll put a link to these casters uh, down in the comment section they really really are uh, good I don't know if you could see that bay light uh, one year limited warranty so uh, four pack two inch heavy duty uh, two with break, two without. Uh, I'll put a link to them in the notes there. So what you want to do, two of them got two, it's breaks, two of them don't. So you want them on the same long side, uh, not the same end. I guess you could crisscross them corner to corner, but then you'd have to walk around to lock and unlock and stuff. But if you put them on an end, the other end can wander, I guess. So uh, put them on one side of the long side or whatever I drew some lines here just some markers I came in half inch and then by the time you figure to center the hole you're three quarter in and then uh, I went up I went up three quarters so and uh, just use an all to mark so you only got to get two of them to start And then you can go from there. So, uh, grab some screws from just around the shop. Uh, 
Yeah, I lost that screw hole, didn't I? I just grabbed some screws around the shop because, you know, when you're doing these projects and stuff, you just want to grab what you can. And you don't want to go spending a whole bunch of money on stuff. It just... So, uh, they're not exactly wood screws, but, but they work just fine, so... It's all right if you go all the way through. These, these screws are just are long, and uh, they just just make it. They're like an, an inch and a half long, so with the thickness of the plate, they just about make it. But I want the longest ones I could possibly get in here, just to make sure we held this thing in place. So, like I said, these aren't exactly wood screws, but they'll work. You, get, you use what you got sometimes on projects around the shop, right? So. Alright, so you guys get the idea of this thing, right? Just putting these screws in here. Alright, so we'll do this one here. We'll get the other one here without the break over on this side. And then we'll stand her up and uh, mount the top, I suppose, or cut the shelf, one of the two. All right, here we are. We set the top down on this thing. Uh, we let it hang over an inch in either direction. So the top measures 42, 42 by 26, all right? Now, it's a little bit bigger than the unit, but I wanted it bigger, all right? It could double for something else in the shop if I want it, or I have to take the planer off and I can use this for something else. And I wanted a little bit of room on the side that I can put like a stack of wood. I'm running through little pieces that I make a cutting boards or something or whatever, and I can stack up some wood on the side just running through instead of putting it on top of the unit. I could have a not done pile and a done pile or one run or two run or whatever. I just wanted it bigger, so. So, uh, just for drilling your holes in the top, uh, I just came in inch and three quarters so I get center in that two by four. That's the top rail there. And uh, draw your line. And if you don't want to draw a line, it didn't matter to me, you could use a chalk line to do, to do this and then that line will fade away. These aren't going to take stay around either so and uh i just used uh some osb some three quarter inch osb that i had uh with them braces underneath you can get away with half inch on this thing uh it, it would be okay but it was scrap i either i actually uh wasn't wide enough so i threw another piece on it and i threw a couple biscuits in there and just glued it up the other day and uh in anticipation of the project and uh use that so uh, this will work. Same thing for the bottom. Uh, I would, and, and I wasn't going to show you that, but I'm out of scrap plywood. <laughs> so something got ate up yesterday. Uh, one of the guys grabbed it and did something with it. My scrap, and uh, good for him, but bad for me. So... Hey, newsflash, hold, hold the presses. We found plywood. I found some more scrap plywood. So, real quick, what you're going to do is, right, what you're going to do is set your square in here and butt your square up against this 2x4 here. All right? And just back it off just about a 16th and then draw a line in here. An inch and a half deep. You got your ruler right on your Swanson square. You got your ruler right on your Swanson square. Just draw an inch and a half deep. Okay? And then come back over here flip your Swanson square get lined up with that mark and then just take a mark and there you go you've got the pencil mark for that notch okay you've got the pencil mark for that notch there okay so do that on the other side too alrighty that's the now we got the notches cut. There you go. All right. Now run your two by four in the middle. Put your other piece of plywood in, and you're good to go. So here's our project for the day. Our uh, 
planer table or could be a chop box table or a bench top anything table uh, route or something for the router to sit a router table to sit on uh, portable band soldier whatever you can use it for whatever so just take if you've got other tables in your shop or whatever make it the same height as that try to keep everything the same then you could slide easily one thing off another or if you need a feed table for your an out feed table for your table saw uh, you could use it for that too so uh, just try to keep everything the same in your shop and uh, it'll work out better for you so so undoubtedly you'll see this in action with the planer on it and me doing something in the next couple of weeks here so uh, that's it for today this is contractor John if you have any comments or questions please visit my Facebook page and ask away all right uh, if you like this video, if it was helpful, please like it and hit the subscribe button. I really do appreciate all my subscribers. So have a blessed day.